Michael from Connecticut. Hi, Michael. Welcome to the Narrow Path. Hello. Hi. Um, so I have a, a, a question. I've been praying for a little wisdom for the last couple of weeks. Um, uh, I'm not sure I'm in the right place uh, physically, meaning my church. Um, he, the pastor spends three to five weeks a year talking about tithing. And I know tithing is biblical, but then he talks about it being pro- tithing progressively. And the more you give, the more God will give back to you. And um, then the, then in that respect, the more you can give back to the church. And um, I, I'm just not like from the gospels, from what I've read in the gospels, you know, everything I've read says, you know, you're to give away your wealth and to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. I just, I'm, I'm just not sure I'm in the right place. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like your opinion on that. Sure. Well, I will say this, that uh, you mentioned tithing is scriptural. It's scriptural if you're living under the Old Covenant. Uh, the, the Old Covenant had a tabernacle and a temple and Levites who had to be supported and, and a temple had to be maintained and so forth. And so God had the 12 tribes, or actually 11 tribes, all the ones except for Levites, uh, give 10% to the Levites of their gross national product, then the Levites would take 10% of that and give it to the priests. Now, this is how the temple system was run, and therefore God uh, ordained this tithing. Now, tithe means 10%. Tithe, the word tithe is an old English word that means tenth. So tithing literally means taking a tenth. And if we're speaking about biblical tithing, we're talking about a tenth to give to the Levites at the temple, because that's the only tithing there was. Now, the tithes also were used for the poor, but they were, they were brought to the Levites. They were brought to the Levites, and the tithe was used to feed and support the Levites, but also to feed the poor. Um, but bringing them to a temple is not really a possibility. Now, there isn't a temple. There aren't Levites now. And so many pastors, I'd, I'd say many, probably most churches, I'm not sure how what percentage, but I certainly find this is a very common teaching among churches. They believe that you're supposed to take 10% of your income now and bring it to your church. And I'm not sure where they're getting that. There's nothing in the Bible that mentions it. Uh, not, the New Testament doesn't mention the tithe at all. I mean, it does when, when Jesus is saying that the Pharisees, in paying their tithes, were doing their duty. That's true. It was their duty. They were under the law. Under the law, that was a duty. And so he said, you paid your tithes, and he said, you also, but you neglected more important things. You should have done both. So he's saying you, you were obligated to do both, but you only did one. And, uh, but he's not saying that Christians tithe. There's no, no, no implication there about what disciples of Jesus are to do. This is about the Pharisees and what they were obligated to do under the law. There's also a mention in, uh, in Hebrews chapter uh, 7 that Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek, but this is not giving an example for Christians to follow. This is his way of saying that it's obvious that Melchizedek was superior to Abraham religiously because he paid his tithes to him. He's making, a, he's making a point about Melchizedek, not about tithing. There's nothing in the New Testament that would imply that Christians are supposed to pay tithes. And if so, to where? There's nothing in the Bible that says where we would pay them to. There's no temple. There's no Levites. Now, someone would say, well, the natural thing would be the local church. Isn't that sort of the New Testament counterpart of the temple? No, it is not. Uh, the, the local church would be more like the New Testament counterpart of the synagogue. And the synagogues were in every city, but there's only one temple. And people didn't bring their tithes to the synagogue. They brought them to the temple. There's only one temple, and today that's a spiritual temple made up of living stones. Every Christian on the planet is part of that temple. We have local churches that are like synagogues, but that's, there's nothing in the Bible about bringing any money to a synagogue. Uh, so you really don't have anything in the Bible that would parallel even slightly an obligation to take a tenth of your income and give it to a local church. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do it. The local church does need support. But there's nothing in the Bible that says that it should be a tenth. I mean, maybe you should give 20% or 50% or 2%, whatever. I mean, different churches have different needs. And if you're benefiting from the ministry of a church, the Bible says those who are taught in the word should share with the needs of those who teach them. And so your pastor, if he's teaching you the word of God, then 
uh, then you know, for you to look to his support is a biblical thing. But to take your tithe, a tenth of your income and give it to him or to your local church is simply nothing the Bible hints at anywhere. What it does hint at, or what it says pretty plainly, is that when you become a Christian, everything you have becomes Christ's. You, you basically forsake all that you have, it says in Luke 14, 33. And that means that everything you have now is, uh, you know, as it were, the t- title is signed over to Christ. He owns it now. But that doesn't mean you get rid of it automatically. You might, but, it, but you are now the steward of his things. So it's not, in, see, in the Old Testament, God blessed you with a certain amount of income. 10% of that belonged to him. The other 90% was yours to do what you want with. And you were encouraged to help the poor and things like that. But, but it was yours to do what you chose to do with. Only 10% was to be given to God. But now, it, Jesus said everything belongs to God. The whole thing belongs to God. And you're a steward of his goods. And therefore, you're going to have to answer to God for everything he gives you and whether you used it for something that, he's, that he approved of or not. Now, that doesn't mean you have to give 10% or 20% or 5% to anyone in particular. It just means you need to consider whatever God has given you, what would he do with it? If it I mean, if it was in his hands instead of yours, because it's his stuff in your hands and you're his manager. So you might, he might think it's a good idea for you to give 10% to your church. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but if you do, it's um, not because you're a tither. It's because that's you feel like God would have you share that much with your church, but there's no obligation. Now, is what if you go to a church that makes you pay tithes? Are you in the wrong place? Uh, well, that depends. If they're very legalistic about it, I'd say get find a church that isn't legalistic, if you can. You know, I don't know what churches aren't, but un- unfortunately, many of them are. But yeah, uh, my, I guess my I guess my problem with it is I know I'm supposed to tithe, and I do. I, and I give to the poor, but I don't. I don't want to talk about it three to five weeks a year when there's so much in the Bible that we should be talking about. Um, yeah, well, I if, don't know. I will say that the the preacher should be mindful of what his congregation are lacking knowledge of. And you're right. I think that the pastor should have it as his goal to teach them what Jesus said to teach. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And Jesus never said anything about tithing. He didn't command anyone to tithe. So, uh, but, but the pastor could and should on occasion talk about how you know, people should steward what God has given them for the kingdom of God's sake. But if, if all he's talking about is giving 10% to, to his organization, then that's not faithful teaching. I mean, the, Jesus didn't say to give 10% to any organization. But but the pastor should teach the terms of discipleship to the congregation. And I don't know how many times a year he may have to. It depends on how, how dull he thinks they are, uh, how little they have gotten the idea. You know, I mean, I think that the preacher needs to be mindful of where the deficiencies are in his congregation's understanding of what it means to follow Christ. And I do think yeah. in America, I think in America, lots of pe- people in churches are deficient in their understanding of what it means to follow Christ in terms of money. I mean, I think a lot of, in fact, I think a lot of Christians are deficient because they believe in tithing. Because if you believe in tithing, then you believe God gets 10% and you get the other 90%. In which case, you're not following what Jesus said. Jesus said, no, God gets all of it. You manage it. Now, if he wants you, of course, to support your family with some of it, so you use some of it for that. He wants you to support the gospel with some of it. So you support the gospel with some of that. Uh, he wants you to feed the poor with some of it. So you do that too. I mean, you, 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 there's no percentages in the Bible of how much of anyone's income should be given to any particular uh, projects. But, but that's, that's what stewarding is. A, a manager makes decisions about things like that. And every Christian is in the position to make decisions about what they will do with God's stuff, which equals 100% of what's in their hands, 100% of what they have in their lifetime, is God's stuff. And when they meet him, he's going to say, okay, how did you do with those five talents I gave you, or ten talents, or one talent I gave you? And, and uh, you know, eternity, uh, you, you, the, you know, the condition you're in in eternity, Jesus said, pretty much is uh, going to be determined by how pleased he is with your answers about that. Uh, yeah. So that's what a pastor should teach. 
Now, I don't say he should teach it three times a year. I, I would say some pastors probably ought to hammer it into the congregation's head every week until they get it. But, you know, on the other hand, there's other things to talk about, too. But, well, but they certainly do that money. Five, yeah. They do that five minutes of every, of every, um, on every Sunday, they take five minutes to talk about tithing. But mm-hmm. then again, he does it three to five times a year. And I just, I just got a gut feeling that I'm not in the right place. Well, it sounds and to I, me, it sounds to me like they may be obsessed with getting people's money. You see, when I teach about giving, I never suggest <clears throat> that anyone needs to give to me or to the narrow path or to the church in my home that I have. We, we don't even take a collection there. We, you know, I just want to see Christians use all their resources the way that they'll be pleased uh, to, when they stand before God. And he says, how did you use those resources? Did you support the kingdom of God or did you support your own agenda? Did you build your own kingdom? Did you help the poor or did you just help your, make yourself more rich? I mean, these are the issues that are going to be embarrassing to many Christians. And I want yeah. to teach people about that, but I don't want to teach anyone that they should give to me. Now, if a pastor says, you have to give 10% to us, the church, you're going to, that's always a little awkward. I mean, I, it strikes me as not a very... If if someone's doing that, uh, I would say they're probably a little too obsessed with their own income, and I don't think that's what a preacher seems supposed to be thinking about. I don't think uh, that's he even it. went as far to talk about twenty five percent and uh, oh boy, even those churches. Tell, so, telling heard... us how to uh, how to manage our finances. Um, so don't spend too much money on Christmas gifts, so you could give to the church more money. Um, okay, well let I me feel... just say this because we've got a long time on this. Uh, Let me just say, uh, there is a place for Christians to learn good money management if they're not good money managers. For example, you know, if they tend to go into debt, I think the church would do well to teach them to live in within their means. Uh, If they tend uh, to to not give anything to the poor uh, or to the spread of the gospel or to the church, then I think they should be taught, you know, your priorities are should be the same as God's priorities for the money that you that you administrate. I mean, people should simply be taught to be faithful stewards uh, because that's part of being a disciple of Jesus. But uh, if he says specifically, how about if you don't buy so many Christmas gifts, but you just give it to us? Now, see, I, I could say, how about if you don't buy a bunch of Christmas gifts for people who don't have any need and who'll probably just you know throw them away because they it's just a, a token of, of doing something on Christmas. But when you could help some poor people, maybe some persecuted pastors in, uh, you know, India, or, or maybe you can help some starving people in Haiti. I mean, there are things better to do, perhaps, than spend a lot of money on Christmas gifts for pe- people, people who don't have any needs. Um, but it's just some kind of a social obligation, which you can certainly buck that. You don't have to follow that. But, uh, but, but every, you know, if a church is saying, you need to give more to the church, I want to say, why? How's the money being used? Well, the money's being used on the uh, on the church uh, mortgage. Oh, well, you know, you, how much are we giving to missions? How much are we giving to the poor? How much is the pastor taking as a salary? I mean, let's let's weigh these things and say, what you know, when we stand before God, is He going to approve of our priorities and spending? If not, I think we ought to change them. And if the church isn't interested in those kind of changes, then I would, uh, yeah, I just say, yeah, look around for another church, but. I, I've given too much time to this because we have a lot of people here, but I, uh, waiting to talk. But uh, I hope that's helpful to you, Michael. Jacob calling from Tacoma, Washington. Hi, Jacob. Hi, Steve. I think I have a disagreement with you about tithing, but I also okay. have a question about it. I'm conflicted about how I should approach this. Okay. It is because Matthew twenty three twenty three and Luke eleven forty two do not neglect to teach about tithing, but I don't know if it would be within Israel to the Levites, such as individually, or to something like a Levite fund or something. Do you want me to read the verses, and what do you think? No, I can quote the verses. I, I know them very well. Okay. That's, that's where Jesus rebuked the Pharisees because they paid their tithes of mint, anise, and cumin, but they neglected what Jesus called the weightier matters of the law. 
which are justice, mercy, and faithfulness, or some translations say faith. And he said, these you ought to have done, meaning the justice, mercy, and faithfulness, the, the weightier matters, these you ought to have done, and not to leave the other, meaning tithing, undone. So he told the Pharisees that they had been correct in paying tithes, but they had been incorrect in neglecting weightier or more important matters of the law. Now, uh, that doesn't have anything to do with my teaching on tithes. My, uh, my teaching on tithes is that it's never commanded or, or, or even hinted at that Christians should pay tithes. Now, I, if I were a Pharisee under the Old Covenant, uh, I would expect Jesus to say, yeah, you should be paying your tithes because that's what the Old Covenant required. You had a temple there. That's what the tithes were for. There was a temple. And the temple staff were the people who were called the Levites. And they were full-time, so they couldn't go out and grow crops and support themselves in other activities. So the people who worshipped at the temple would give a tithe of their income <clears throat> to be the salaries or the, the support for the Levites who worked full-time at the temple. Now, we don't have any Levites with us today, and we don't have any temple, and therefore there's not a reason in the world to believe we have a tithe, though the Pharisees did. The Pharisees were part of a religion that had a temple and, and Levites and a law that told them to give 10% to support the Levites. That was, of course, done away in the New Covenant where we don't have a physical temple, we don't have Levites, and there's no command ever to tithe. Okay, well, thank you. I was thinking about also the New Covenant um, in Jeremiah. It yep. talks about God's law, uh -huh. and I think you're saying that's not um, the law of Moses, but what if it right. is the law of Moses? Well, if it is the Law of Moses, we're in a lot of trouble because the Law of Moses said we have to make three trips a year to Jerusalem to offer animal sacrifices at the festivals. Now, I don't know anyone who does that because there's no temple there. There's no sacrifices in Jerusalem. So if we are required to keep the Law of Moses, then we're all in trouble with God. We're all under the curse because the Law said, Cursed is everyone who does not abide in everything that the Law teaches. Okay, Paul said if you get circumcised, you're obligated to keep the whole law, 613 laws, uh, you know, if that is true, then we are simply in the wrong religion because our religion tells us there is no more animal sacrifice. Christ has brought an end to that system. There is no more physical temple. God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. He dwells in a living temple made of living stones. Uh, there is no more priesthood serving uh, God's people. It is the people of God themselves are the priesthood. So, in other words, it's a different religion. Judaism is one religion. Christianity is a different one. And so, if we're supposed to keep the law, we're supposed to be part of the Jewish religion. And Paul said, well, if you do that, you've uh, fallen from grace, and uh, you've become estranged from Christ. So, obviously, you can't be part of two uh, contradictory religions at the same time. Yeah, I've been telling people that I'm a Christian and that I don't have a religion. So I, I, uh, I understand there's Israel and there's the nation. So maybe as a citizen of the United States of America, I'm not required to tithe to Israel. Well, no, no one, no one is required to tithe to Israel because again, there's no Levites there. Even if you lived in Israel, you couldn't give your tithes to the Levites because they don't exist. And if they did exist, they've got nothing to do because the Levites job was to take care of the temple, and there's no temple. So uh, it's, it'd be very, very strange if God expected us to keep these laws, and yet he had the temple destroyed 2,000 years before we were born, and, you know, and every generation since then has been unable to keep the law. We could argue that God just wanted to put everyone in a position so he could condemn them for their breaking the law for the past 2,000 years, or he allowed the temple to be destroyed because the law was passed and fulfilled just like Jesus said it was. That's that's the view I would take. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your answer. All right, Jacob. Thanks for your call.